right? If you're a startup and you've got employees, you are you potentially are qualifying for these credits, which- Hi, I'm Beth Hockberger, CPA, CGMA. This channel aims to educate you on tax, tech, crypto, and finance related news. Come learn how to grow and keep your wealth. Today, we're gonna to talk about tax planning for startups. Now, you might wonder, how do you need tax planning for startups, right? They generally don't make any money, Right? What kind of taxes would they pay? Well, it turns out there's actually a lot of decisions that you need to make before you even make any revenue when you have a startup. And that's what we're going to talk about here. So first off, choosing the right business structure for your new venture. I always say, think about where you're looking to go to figure out where you should start. It might seem counterintuitive, but a lot of times, depending on what your exit strategy for your startup is, can determine what kind of entity structure you should have. So for example, if you're looking to take investor money and then exit in a big sale or IPO, you probably wanna be a C corporation. But if you're bootstrapping and you're really funding it yourself, you might wanna be an LLC or an S, or an S corporation. So it really depends what your kind of vision and strategy for the company is which will help determine what your entity structure should be. Understanding your tax obligations. So again, I get asked, why would I have tax obligations? I don't make any money, there's no profit, we're pre-revenue, we're new business. But just because you don't owe any federal taxes, you could have state tax obligations. So for example, if you are set up with employees in California, you probably are paying a franchise tax every year because you're operating and you're existing in the great state of California. That's not the only one though. There are other states like Massachusetts, New York that have tax obligations every year, even when you don't have any revenue. So you need a CPA who's well-versed in these type of things to help you navigate what kind of taxes you might have to pay and how and when to pay them. Also, don't forget if you've got payroll, you'll have payroll taxes, right? Things like that. It's a lot. There's a lot of taxes out there. You need to understand your obligation. It's not that it's just zero because you're not making any money yet. So the next thing is to maximize your deductions and credits. I cannot tell you how many startups I have worked with that said, well, we're not making any revenue yet, so we're not gonna bother to file a tax return, or we don't think you know we need to keep track of these things. And that's so, so wrong. You do still need to keep track of these things. And the reason is you ha you can have things called net operating losses, right? So if you're a C corporation and you're spending, 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 you're burning through like all the cash that you have, you're generating losses. Those losses can be rolled forward to offset profits in future years so that you're gonna reduce your tax burden down the line. But if you don't report those losses, in the prior years, you're not going to have those losses there in the future to be able to use. So it's really important that you're maximizing all these deductions. You might also be qualifying for R&D tax credits, right? If you're a startup and you've got employees, you you potentially are qualifying for these credits, which can be used to offset payroll taxes. So they have an immediate benefit, but this only works when you're reporting everything, you're capturing everything and you're, um, you're, you're just taking advantage and maximizing those deductions and those credits. Um, quarterly estimated payments. This is gonna go back to that first tax obligation that we were talking about, right? You might have quarterly payments that you need to make to the state and you are gonna be more compliant if you can stay on top of those and make those estimated taxes. And then once you are doing a little bit better, things get a little bit looser, you might want to put together some retirement plans, right? Those are great incentives to help keep staff. And it also creates a deduction for your startup when you have them. So all of these things, a lot of moving parts, a lot of really important items to keep track of, but don't worry, we're here to help you. You're not in it alone. Find a great advisor, find, um, a team, right? You need a, an attorney, you're going to need a CPA, right? You might need outsourced accounting. And we work with startup clients for all of those things. And we even work with your attorneys. So if you got a startup and you think like, oh, I got nothing to worry about, there's no accounting, there's no taxes, 
You might be wrong. Schedule a call at my office. We're happy to walk you through it and make sure that you stay out of trouble and get yourself set up with the best tax and accounting position that you can possibly be in for your startup. So that's it. Uh, drops a line. You have any comments, questions? Post them here. And as always, I'm Bet. I'll see you next time. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you learned something new. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue improving your tax and financial literacy. Bye.